guys let's learn UX research as fast as we can so the first thing we need to talk about is the UX design process and where research actually fits in and what the point of research is so this is how as a UX designer this is kind of the process that you go through for designing websites and apps before you hand it over to development teams so there's a process that you start off with and the first thing there is research so that's what this is all about now research is understanding First of all, your target users, that's who you're designing for and kind of what the problem is because without the research phase, then you really don't know what you're designing for. But once you have your research, then you can then analyze it. There are different UX tasks to analyze data. And then you basically take all of those findings and you take it into initial sketches. This is an ideation phase where you basically go through as many different ideas as you can. Then as you get more refined, you create prototypes in Figma and then you test it with users and then this is like an iterative process and it goes on and on until you have something that everyone's happy with and then you hand that over to a development team. So the main thing about UX research is who are we designing for? That's something that we need to know. So, and we also need to know um, basically the, we call them the users. We need to know their needs and goals, what they want from the product, why they're using the product, who they are. And this just gives us as designers a base understanding uh, and kind of an empathetic, if I can say it right, understanding of who we're designing for. So there are different methods as a UX designer that you can use. There are hundreds of methods, um, but you only need to use a few on a project and um, they're quite common. So the first thing is I'm going to talk about qualitative methods. So this is a, it, it, it's a big word. It just means quality. Really, this is think one on one time with uh, with users. Uh, one of the big ones is user interviews. So this is where in a company you will normally uh, talk to your customers. This could be remote over Skype or it could be in person. A lot of the times it will be in person. Companies will have users come in. Um, if you're designing something uh, like, a, like a project, you can also use your friends and family. But you, you want to interview them and you'll normally have a set of questions that you will go with. And this is really to understand uh, a collection of your users you might do five or ten and then you will be able to analyze that data and you'll be able to then create personas from that data so that persona creating comes a little bit after on kind of after you ask some broad questions and understand um, why these people are using the product then there are other things like diary studies so diary studies is a different ux method this is where um, you already have a product and uh, the users will then create a diary. They can use an app. There are some specific diary studies um, websites where they can use, and they will basically make a note throughout the day of when they're using the app, why they used it, and how they're getting along with it. And so it kind of gives you as a designer a good insight into what their day-to-day -day is like using your application. This is really, really detailed, and this is only a few users, but this gives you a good idea of why they're using it. Then there are other methods like card sorting. So this is where you get users to come in and this is specifically used for say you want to organize the information on your website or an app. Say you've got a load of pages. You will basically create little cards for each page. You will give it to the users. They will, um, you will write the title of each page on and then they will get those cards. Say you've got 50 pages. They will group them into say five groups and they will give each group a name. So if you're doing this for a bank, you might have a big group of cards which are all about um, accounts, like current accounts, sorting accounts, checking accounts, all different ones, and then that, that group would be called accounts. So this really lets you understand what the users are thinking and how they would organize your data. So you can analyze this and then you can get um, actually quite good feedback from it and help you later on. The next one is a quantitative methods. So this is a quantitative, which stands for quantity, really. So this is a, this is all about a lot of people. So the first one is surveys. So this is um, something you send out. It, it could be if you already have a product to see how the product's doing, or it could be uh, to new customers. If you find the target audience, you will ask them questions and you will get back a mass amount of data. This is really good for understanding on a whole how good your um, product or service is and, and who, who you're designing for in general. So you'll normally do this. This could be actually done before qualitative interviews. Um, then you've got things like A-B testing. So A-B testing, 
you can this is where you send it out to a mass and you'll have two different versions of a design so this could be done at different stages in the process so um this could be done a little bit later on so you will send version a out version b out this will normally be done by a coder they will automatically set the website up to do it and then you'll be able to check which one is performing better so say if you've got a youtube channel you could a b test the thumbnail so you see which one's working you can apply this in lots and lots of methods but this is great because it gets qu uh, quantitative data a lot of quantitative data there then we've got things like web analytics this is um, a lot of quantity again so say you start a new project but this is normally when you've already you, you kind of um you've already got a product you will have a look at the analytics and you can learn a lot about how people are using the site uh, already so this is great if you go into a company always have a look at the analytics and you'll be able to tell whether the website's any good or not by how long people are spending on it by what pages they're leaving on um this is really good for understanding your users then we come on to usability testing so this is something as a designer that you're going to do um quite a lot of the time um, you will normally get people to come in then you might sit in a room and they might actually test your website or an app you might give them tasks to do and they will go through and then um, you normally view them maybe you might be in a side room watching on a telly uh, some companies have like a glass uh, screen like an interrogation room where you sit on the other side and you the person doesn't know you're there and you, you watch them using the app really fun you learn quite a lot from this but this is something um, that kind of once you've got your prototype up when you're doing uh, when you're testing it basically to make sure it works this is like a cycle so normally in the morning you might go into some tests you might then improve it for the afternoon and then see how people are going on so this is kind of a kind of fun and quick to change then um, because people aren't in the office anymore we do a lot of remote usability testing so this could be done over skype there are lots of websites like usabilityhub.com and usertesting.com where you will uh, put your prototype or your website and give people tasks and you'll be able to watch recorded videos of them again this is great uh, this is done a little bit later once you've done your uh, prototypes and you understand how people are using your site so if you want to learn more about any of these methods i've got a course over at coursecareers.com where we go through projects and we get you basically ready for a job so that's in the description and then the next job then is to analyze all this data so i'm going to leave a link to a video which we'll talk about that next